Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wolfpacker Football Preview Show. My name's Ethan McDowell. I am your host, and I am joined, as I always am, by Noah Fleischman. It is officially talking season. Not football season yet, but we're going to talk about it a lot over the next couple of months because, you know, recruiting has started to slow down a little bit. Baseball wrapped up its season, and now it's finally time to start focusing on NC State's 2024 football season. Here's how it's going to work. We're breaking up the season preview by position by week. We're starting things off this week with a quarterback preview, and we have a ton of exciting content all on thewolfpacker.com right now. Um, Noah and I have both got to talk to Dave Doran, spoke with Robert and I, and got a real good in-depth look at what NC State's quarterback room is going to look like this year. And um, so all that info is on thewolfpacker.com. We're going to talk about those conversations on the show today. But if you want to see the quotes, you want to see some of the more, you know, information intel stuff it's all on the website right now and to you know sweeten the deal a little bit it's only one dollar right now to join for your first month it's a pretty sweet deal to um you know from now until you know july 27th which is pretty i think maybe exactly when nc state's media day is um you can get a bunch of content a bunch of awesome season preview content that um i don't think you're going to find anywhere else so here's what we're going to do today Noah and I are going to give you a rundown of what the quarterback room is looking like for 2024. We're going to talk about, you know, the two main guys to watch there. Um, As we well know, after the 2022 football season, you need quarterback depth. That's very important. So we're going to give you a full rundown of, you know, you know, the, the likely starter, Grayson McCall. He's probably going to, he's definitely going to start under center for NC state this year. We're going to give you a rundown of who's behind him on the depth chart. So if, you know, what happens in 2022 happens again, you'll know who the potential practice squad quarterback getting brought up for the UNC game is. So we're going to give you as in-depth a look into the room as possible. We're going to give you reasons why we're optimistic about the room and reasons why we're concerned about the room. And then we're going to ask some questions from our subscribers on thewolfpacker.com before giving you a quick prep recruiting update at the end of the show. So, Noah, that is my long-winded way to ask you to give us a rundown. Who has arrived and who has left NC State's quarterback room since we last saw the pack play in 2023? Yeah, we'll go with the departures. Obviously, in all of these you know, preview videos we're doing, we're mainly going to focus on the scholarship players that are on, on the roster, all 85 of those. So we'll start you know, with the guys that left on scholarship. Brandon Armstrong, obviously – was the guy that came in as the guy through the portal last year, up and down season, finished as the, the starter. He exhausted eligibility and is done. MJ Morris, a guy who played four games last year, redshirted, ended up transferring to Maryland. He is fighting for a spot with the Terrapins. So there's your two quarterbacks gone. So if two quarterbacks leave, Ethan, means you got to bring in two quarterbacks. And that's exactly what NC State did. They went to the portal, got a proven veteran in Grace McCall from Coastal Carolina. First three-time Sunbelt Player of the Year in, in conference history. You know, mid-major conference, probably the best group of five conference um, in, in, in college football right now. And then to replace, you know, he's obviously the presumed starter. We'll get into the depth chart. And then C.J. Bailey, Cedric Bailey Jr. out of Miami, Florida. Guy who's one of the best, you know, quarterbacks in the country. Played on a great team. Played with elite talent. And that's going to help his transition to the college game. It already has, and it's going to continue to help. So two in, two out. Pretty basic for for quarterback room, but NC State lost two pretty good quarterbacks, but they brought in, I think, two two elite talents that can take this offense to another level. Yeah, so let's talk about the two deep, man. So Grayson McCall is going to be the starter. Easy to see why. Over 10,000 passing yards for his career. ton of touchdowns. And, um, man, we talked about it off mic a good bit over the past 24 hours as we're working on this preview stuff. He just doesn't turn the ball over. Like he, he, he threw a career high six interceptions in 2023 before that. And his three, you know, Sunbelt player of the year winning um, uh, Sunbelt player of the year winning seasons. He threw eight interceptions combined, never throwing more than three in a season. That's unreal ball security. And Noah, like we'll pull up like Grayson's highlights here. It's not like he is a game manager, just, you know, capital off of the system here. He makes plays. He makes plays out of structure. He, um, you know, I, I think is a game-changing type of quarterback. You know, you see there, he can create with his legs a little bit too, especially in the red zone. Like, he is doing all of the things you want to see out of a quarterback in terms of 
improvisation while just taking care of the ball better than pretty much any other quarterback in the country. Noah, you were um, a uh, Sun Belt reporter covering JMU for a while. So you, you got a pretty up close look at Grayson McCall. Um, what stood out about um, Grayson when you got to see him play? Yeah, he's, he's one of those guys. You can tell he's different. Obviously, a three-time conference player of the year, that's hard in any conference. I don't care what level of football you're playing. Yeah, that's a tough thing to do. He's a guy who played, you know, in a in a really unique offense with Jamie Chadwell, who's now Liberty, kind of a, an option-based offense that can throw the ball. He can run. He's not as much of a runner as, as Brendan Armstrong was, but in high school he ran for over 3,000 yards in an option-based system. Obviously, this one at NC State is different, but overall he's a really accurate passer, can get the ball downfield when needed, uses the tight ends a lot, which which we know that that will that'll come into play this year at NC State. Obviously, Isaiah Likely was, was a really good talent with him at, at Coastal now with the Baltimore Ravens. So overall, he's a really good quarterback. He can throw, he can run. And as you see here, you know, that was a, a play. You can just take 10, 15 yards at the middle if it's there, but he can also hit an open receiver downfield. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, he is the kind of player – that is a, a game changer for an offense that has all the pieces, needs the player to get them the ball. And, and this is a guy that obviously NC State liked a lot in the portal and, and they were able to land him. Yeah, so he's going to hold down the starting spot this year. He has just the one, the one year of eligibility remaining. So he'll be gone after um, after the 2024 season. And then you're looking at um, C.J. Bailey as the likely backup for this season. Um, if you had asked me before signing day, who the likely backup would be, I probably would have told you another portal quarterback. That, that, that's where it looked like things were trending. But C.J. Bailey showed up on campus, got to work in the weight room, and immediately showed that he can be an instant contributor if they need him to be. Um, obviously, they prefer for him to spend the year learning and getting some college experience before you know, stepping into the spotlight here. But um, everything we've heard, Noah, indicates he's going to be the backup. So it, it looks like you're going to have a situation where you're going to have, you know, the two ends of the spectrum here. You have, you know, super, super experienced Grayson McCall has been in um, college football for more than half a decade. And C.J. Bailey has been in college football for about six months now. But um, there's a lot of optimism around both of them. And um, C.J. Bailey is going to hold down that starting spot. Um, the third scholarship quarterback on the roster is Lex Thomas, a redshirt freshman, um, had a shoulder injury. Um, at the end of or in the middle of his senior year of high school and was recovering from that and is now healthy and uh, looked pretty good in the spring game. I thought had a really, really, really nice deep pass to, um, um, you know, longtime friend Wesley Grimes down the sideline. Um, he's likely he's going to be involved in the competition for that backup quarterback job. And uh, I don't think I'd be floored if he ended up, you know, you know, there being like an or between him and CJ or something like that for the backup job. But um, yeah, you have, so you have three quarterbacks um, there. And uh, but right now, I think I feel pretty comfortable saying it's going to be Grayson McCall starting and then CJ Bailey at number two. All right. Let's talk about some reasons that we're optimistic and some reasons that we're pessimistic about this quarterback room. Noah, let's start with the positive. What's one reason why Wolfpack fans should feel good about um, who's going to be lining up under center this year. Yeah, I think you feel good because there's a proven winner and a proven talent at starting quarterback in Grayson McCall. Obviously, at Coastal Carolina, he helped to run, you know, some about conference in his three, in his really four years starting there, but three years as that, that conference player of the year under Jamie Chadwell. Um, he did spend last year under Tim Beck, former NC State offensive coordinator. Um, but I think that's a reason to be optimistic because he's a guy that knows what he's doing. He knows he doesn't have to do too much because he's surrounded by the amount of talent. He, he can come in, do his job, and NC State will be successful. I agree. I, I think that is my that is kind of going off of my first reason, <laughs> my main reason for optimism as well. I think just there's just a really high floor with Grayson, right? Like I, I don't think he's going to come in and suddenly you have a quarterback who's not able to execute Robert and I's offense. He's not going to be turning the ball over constantly. There's nothing in his college football pass that indicates he's going to struggle in, in, in those departments, right? And then when we talk to Robert and I, and he tells us that, um, you know, Grayson is the best first-year player in his system that he has ever coached, 
that's high praise. And I don't know for the listeners who have never like spoken with Robert and I, like he's not just throwing praise out there to throw praise out there. Um, if, if he said it, he meant, he means it. So man, that is high praise. And that just kind of solidifies the feeling that no, we've talked about all off season about, um, just, it feels like there's going to be stability and consistency at the quarterback position, but he has, he has the, uh, potential to, you know, elevate, elevate the position to, I don't know, like a 2021 Devin Leary level, I feel like. So that that's one of the reasons for optimism, in my opinion. It's one of the position groups I am the most optimistic about as we uh, start to you know prepare for next season here. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, um, Noah's currently on um, puppy duty. He's um, watching his new puppy. So um, there might be some gaps here, but um, no, let, let's, uh, let's talk about, let's get negative. Let's talk about reasons why, why things could go wrong in the in NC state quarterback room. Um, what are some potential you, issues you could see arising? Yeah, I think it's just having an inexperienced backup quarterback. Obviously CJ Bailey is really, really good, really talented, but he hasn't played at the college level. Um, this is something that people thought about going into the you know spring. Maybe they think about getting somebody in the spring portal just to, sure up the position they didn't uh, which is fine he's really talented they really like him a lot they think he's prepared for the moment especially sitting behind grace and learning from a very experienced quarterback but it's kind of one of those hesitations especially if they need to use multiple quarterbacks next year because mm-hmm. you're kind of thin you feel good about the depth you have with three quarterbacks everyone stays healthy but you lose grayson or you if you lose cj or you lose um lex you kind of feel a little little on edge because then if you lose one more you're down to one, and it's it's not going to be too great. So that's kind of iffy, not carrying four scholarship quarterbacks, but they like what they have. And and I don't think there's any reason you should be disappointed that C.J. Bailey's probably the second guy up. But he's really, really good. I just think that it's kind of one of those things of if he gets put the thread in the action, it, you're going to have some learning curve. Everyone does. We saw it with M.J. Morris two years ago. We also saw it with M.J. Morris last year too. So we'll see what happens. But he that's probably the only knock, I guess, on the position group right now. Yeah, man. I mean, you mentioned it. Like, I, this wasn't a deal where NC State pursued a bunch of backup quarterbacks in the portal. They didn't. And this was CJ Bailey proving himself to the point where NC State felt like they didn't need to pursue a backup quarterback. Like, from literally the day he started spring practice, I was hearing from folks like, hey, CJ Bailey, watch out for him. Hey, CJ Bailey, he's awesome. And it sounds like that just continued throughout spring practice. I thought he looked great in the spring game as well. It's clear that NC State just overall feels great about what they have in CJ. So um, I think it's a if, if you feel comfortable not having to use a scholarship on another portal quarterback, then you know that opened up a space for one of the you know transfer portal guys you brought in in the spring that are going to bolster the secondary. Um, <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, we now have a surprise appearance from Noah's puppy. But um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to um, seeing how the quarterback room shapes up. I wouldn't be, like you said, disappointed that CJ's the backup, right? I think that is a good thing. That is a sign that NC State knows or believes that he can be the future of this program. All right, um, we're going to dive into some of our subscriber questions. But before we do that, I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Game Time. Game Time is a ticket buying and selling marketplace. Whether you're looking for tickets to NC State season opener against Western Carolina, looking to go to maybe a Durham Bulls game, a concert, a comedy show, literally whatever you are looking for, they have it. Um, it and my favorite thing about game time noah is when i log on to the app which i use frequently to buy tickets in the raleigh durham area you can see the exact view from your seat where you would be sitting so i'll pull it up for a durham bulls game um tonight actually for those watching on youtube you can see this if you bought the ticket that'd be the view from your seat it's cool it takes a step out of the ticket buying process streamlines it something that i appreciate about um about the process um you can find Game Time on any app store. Just search up Game Time, or you can go on your web browser and look up GameTime.co. Um, either one works. And then if you do check it out, you go buy a NC State football ticket. Use code Wolfpack when you do. All cat that's all caps Wolfpack, and you'll get twenty dollars off your first purchase, your first order there. And um, you know, it's just uh, 
easy to use platform, streamlines the ticket buying process. And um, heck, with a, our, our deal, you make it a little cheaper too. So go check it out, Game Time on any app store or gametime.co on your web browser. All right, Noah, let's dive into some subscriber questions here. Um, the first one is coming to us from Wolfpacker85. Does the staff feel comfortable with Bailey as the backup should Grayson go down? Are we going to make a run at another QB transfer? I'll answer the second part for you first with an emphatic no. They are not even considering, as far as I know, bringing another quarterback. They're full. They're, the 2024 roster is set, basically, at this point. And they feel very comfortable at, at, with having CJ back there as the backup. Um, Noah, uh, why should you know they be – you know, happy with them having CJ back there. Let's we're going to pull up his highlights here and um, w watch him cook at um, Shamanah Madonna, one of the top high school programs in the country. But um, from what you saw in the spring game, from what you heard during spring practice, um, it's it's pretty like decisive, right? Like they they seem very comfortable in having CJ a as the backup. They do, and, and they're comfortable because of how good he is. I mean, he came in, hit the ground running, rave reviews from day one of spring ball. He's got an arm. The only problem is you got to put some muscle on him, which Coach Thunder is pretty good at doing, and also just getting him a year of just college football scheme and, and terminology, and they, he gets it. And just the speed isn't any different either than what he was playing, you know, on a national level type team. Um, but I think the biggest thing that we learned, um, you know, going into this, this summer camp is – what Robert and I said about him, he makes his teammates better. Mm -hmm. that's, that's hard to do. That's what you want your quarterback to do. But as a freshman who's never played college football, come in and in one set of 15 spring practices, considerably look different, you know, make the guys around him look good and look different, look better than, than what they might with other people. That says a lot. That says a lot about his talent. It says a lot about his leadership. And I think that's why you're excited about C.J. Bailey, not only in 2024, but let me just put it out there now. The keys to the car probably going to get handed to him in 2025. And, and that's what you want to see from a guy like that. And just the fact that they're comfortable bringing that up. Like when we talk to Anaya and we talk to Doran, the fact that they're comfortable with like floating the idea out there of, yeah, CJ could be the future of this program. They've watched him for like, like you said, 16 practices. Like, the, the, they already feel comfortable enough to say that. That just tells me that he must be a truly special player. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he could be NC State's franchise quarterback after, once this season wraps up. Um, and, um, you know, Dora made the comparison of, like, in the NFL, like you like to see a um, quarterback be able to spend a year developing uh, behind an entrenched starter. Like, you know, um, I'm certainly not making the comparison here, but I'm going to use the Kansas City Chiefs because – Dave Dorn is such a big Chiefs fan. The Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes thing, right? Like that ended up being a beautiful situation for both of them with, um, you know, Pat Mahomes taking on that role after learning for a year. And um, Dorn thinks that's ideal. That That's an ideal situation for a quarterback to walk into. And it seems like CJ is in a perfect situation to um, – Come in, learn. Like you said, put some muscle on the his six six frame. He's already done that. That's one of the things I was really impressed with um, during his uh, um, when I when I when we spoke with Coach Thunder um, before spring practices. He, it sounds like he went to work in the weight room. So you know the work ethics there. He's going to have a um, you know college football ready body by the season, and with another year on top of that, you know. I almost don't even entertain like the weight questions with a lot of guys these days because NC State's strength staff is so good and reliably gets folks to where they need to be consistently. You, you just don't really see very often that not being the case at NC State. So full confidence in CJ and um, Coach Thunder to get him where he needs to be physically. And it sounds like he's already like has like the football IQ and obviously has the, um, you know, just the natural ability and skill to play quarterback at a high level in the ACC. So that's our long way of answering Wolfpacker 85's question and a resounding absolutely they feel comfortable enough, and you all should too. All right, our second question here. Um, well, well, we'll go with the second part of this second question here first. Is C.J. Bailey closer to being QB1 or QB3? 
I think that's a really interesting question because, um, you know, obviously Grayson McCall, I'd say, is clearly the starter. Like, I, I don't think there's much of a quarterback competition going into fall camp. Grayson will start for the Wolf Pack this year. But, um, you know, I – I think he's probably close, like talent wise, to Grayson McCall. I don't think that's a huge leap to say no. Like, am, am, am I like, is this totally out of left field to be like, I don't think talent wise there is that steep of a drop off from Grayson to CJ? Yeah, I think they can both make the throws. They can do all of that. The biggest drop off you have is experience. And I think that comes, that plays into the overall body of work of what you're looking at a quarterback of how much experience they have and being comfortable in big moments, which. Grayson is. CJ could be too, but you could also get a deer in the headlights look, you know, the first time you're in a big moment, packed crowd on the road, whether you're at Clemson or you're against Tennessee and Charlotte. That's a different story than playing against Western Carolina on August 29th. So we'll see. That's the biggest difference. But I think he is closer to Grace McCall talent wise. And just if you look at the raw, what can he do for me on a football field? I'd say they're pretty similar. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, all right. I'm going to put you on the spot with the next one. Um, the, the first part of um, our guy B.C. Barker's question was, what are the chances Grayson McCall sets the passing touchdown record? We're going to take that as um, NC State's um, passing touchdown record, which um, is held by Devin Leary. Um, we'll pull up his college stats. But, um, you know, Grayson McCall, we can look at his numbers. In 2020, 26 passing touchdowns. Then 27 in 2021. 24 in 2022 and then 10 in 2023 in a season that was cut short due to injury. Um, so Devin Leary, um, his passing touchdown record was, um, I, I believe he had over 30 plus. I'll pull up the record. But um, yeah, so in 2021, Devin Leary tossed 35 passing touchdowns. I think the offense is going to be really good this year. That's going to be a theme with these first few previews is in general, Noah and I are very optimistic about how NC State's offense will look next season. Do you think Grayson McCall could throw for 36 touchdowns in a season, Noah? I don't know if that's 36. I do think he hits over 30. When you look at the record book, only it's only happened five times in NC State history. Somebody hits over 30 touchdowns. Devin Leary in 2021 with 35. Philip Rivers in 2003 with 34. Russell Wilson in 2009 with 31. And then Mike Lennon did it twice with 31 as well. I think it's a good good company to be in with NC State quarterback the lineage and, and who they have. Definitely, though, I don't know if he breaks the record. But I texted you this, I think, a couple of days ago. I do think he leads the league in passing touchdowns this year. I'll put it out there. I think he leads the league in passing touchdowns. Now, that's a bold prediction, man. With um, you know, Cam Ward in Miami, DJ Uyunglele in at Florida State. That, that's a that's a bold prediction. But you know what, man? I kind of agree with you. And we wrote a bold prediction story on the website yesterday, and one of the ones on there was I think he'll be an all ACC quarterback. I think he'll be a um, you know, one of the three best signal callers in the league. And I would not be surprised if you know he's captaining you know, the best offense in the ACC this year. Uh, it just wouldn't shock me with all of the playmakers around him. I thought Robert and I's scheme really impressed me down the stretch of last season. My expectations are sky high for this offense, quite simply. I think it's going to, they have the potential to make a huge jump um, into next season. And Grayson McCall is going to be a huge part of that. And um, I, I don't know about throwing for over 35 touchdowns, like you said, because, um, I think the rushing attack is also just going to be way better for NC State. So I think, you know, th there might be a few more rushing touchdowns in there than there was um, in uh, 2021. But uh, I will say, I think, I think he'll set a career high. I think he'll go, I think he'll go above 27 and, um, you know, yeah, get, get around that 30 number and set a career high. And, and if he does that, folks, that means NC State's offense is really humming and it looks great. So maybe not breaking the record. Is it, is it out of the realm of possibility? No, no. I, I, I think the possibility is open because I think this is going to be the best NC State offense we've seen in a long time, right? So we'll, we'll see how it all shapes up. But, um, yeah, man, in total, um, any final takeaways, Noah? Because I, I, feel, I feel like we've I, – I don't want to be, like, overly positive, but, like, I, I just think, like, 
there's the quarterback position just going to be really solid in Raleigh. Um, I think regardless of where the ceiling ends up getting set, the floor is pretty locked in right here. Yeah, I think it is because when you look at the offense, we're going to break it all down the next couple weeks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, offensive line. I think this was the one spot they had to nail in the portal. Mm-hmm. Everything else, they had the talent already for the most part. They they added to it, built it differently, but this was the one spot you had to get right, and I think they did. Grayson McCall was the guy that they wanted, and they, they got him over in a recruiting battle with UCF, which we've, we've written about multiple times on the website. But I think – there's no reason to not be optimistic about Grayson McCall. He's a proven guy. This isn't a wild card. This isn't Brandon Armstrong coming off of an up and down year after being really good at Virginia a couple of years before. This is a guy who has put together three years in a row under Jimmy Chadwell of being the conference player of the year. Obviously, Tim Beck last year, a little bit different story, but he also got hurt. Um, but he's fine. He had a concussion last year, but he's okay and he's good to go. And I think he's ready to go. And I don't think he's scared. He's got nothing to lose. He came to NC State to increase his draft stock and see what happens. And uh, yeah. the nothing to lose mentality. He also has a chip on his shoulder, which is there's if there's one thing Dave Dorn loves, folks. It is a quarterback with a chip on his shoulder. And um, Grayson definitely has that. Um, I mean, most of the schools that he's going to play against this year didn't recruit him out of high school. I mean, shoot, in, in, in NC State didn't recruit him out of high school. He's, he's from Char- the Charlotte area. And um, – yeah, he's going to be able to go up against um, those ACC teams that you know, didn't think he was good enough when he was coming out of high school. And there's motivation attached to that. Of course there is. So he's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder, motivated to prove something. And um, that general mentality usually lends itself to success at NC State. And um, I'm going to close it out with um, my last predictions. Probably I think he's going to be, you know, obviously, I think he's going to be a captain this year. I, I think and on top of just the fact that, you know, starting quarterbacks usually are, I, it sounds like he's really picked up a leadership role, really just gets along with all the guys well. And, um, has, you know, it, it's not easy to do. Like, I think we take that for granted with like a transfer quarterback coming in and like taking the reins as a leader of a team. Like he's having to do that after not knowing <laughs> most of these guys. So, but it sounds like he's done a good job picking up a leadership role and, uh, you know, that's always good to hear. Good to hear that off the field, things are going as well as on the field. All right. Um, before we get out of here, um, this will be our quickest recruiting update of um, our series of preview podcasts. Um, we're going to go through every position and just give you a quick update on where Insta State stands in the 2025 recruiting class. The pack holds one 2025 quarterback commitment from Will Wilson. He committed almost exactly a year ago today. Um, three-star prospect from Columbia, South Carolina. He's totally locked in with the Wolfpack guys. He was on campus for his official visit last week. A really, really solid um, quarterback who I've been able to evaluate in person a handful of times. He improves every time I see him. And uh, he has the arm talent, I think, to um, you know just be a really, really solid pocket passer. And then he has dynamic rushing ability that I think makes him a game-changing prospect as well. So really, really optimistic about his potential and no reason to be concerned. He is locked in at NC State. There's no concern of, oh, what if South Carolina starts pushing for the hometown kid? He, they tried. Um, it didn't work. He's going to NC State, folks. So, um, yeah, that's our recruiting update, and that's how we're going to wrap up the first episode of our Wolfpack Football Preview Podcast Series. Noah, Thanks for joining me today. I'm looking forward to um, previewing the rest of the season. And um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. And we will see you next week to preview the running backs and wide receivers. See you then.